While we're not exclusively CRO experts, Joe and I have both been running paid media campaigns for well over 10 years, especially in the lead gen space. And we have a lot of clients who ask us what they should and shouldn't include on their landing pages. So we thought rather than just answering all of those questions individually, we could put together a video just in case you have the same question. So today we're gonna run through a handful of best practices for lead generation landing pages, and then walk through some real world examples to show you how those can be applied on a number of different pages. This video is gonna be a little bit different than most of the other videos on the Paid Media Pros channel. We are not going to be in the ad accounts and we are not going to be showing active client accounts. What I will be showing are real landing pages that popped up when I conducted a few high level searches for lead generation type businesses. So most of them will be focused on my geographic area, Indiana in the United States, but I think they give a good range of examples of how lead generation landing pages can look, but that we're gonna go through each of them trying to focus on a handful of best practices and see who's following them, who's not. But then even more so, I think it's useful to look at real live landing pages like this while focusing on best practices, because you can see the differences in how each of these best practices can be executed. Just because your business follows all the same best practices as another business, that does not mean that your landing pages have to look identical. They can look very different to help you stand out and beat the competition. So what are the best practices we're gonna be looking for today? The first is gonna be really important. We wanna deliver on the user intent. What did they search for in the first place? And did that landing page deliver? Next is around a relevant header. Does the top portion of the page, the first thing anybody is gonna see, reflect what the user had intent-wise, but then also, is it impactful enough to make them want to continue reading the page? The rest of the best practices are going to be something that happens throughout the entirety of the page. So there's not one specific section we're looking for here. It's not in a specific placement like the header is, but we wanna use calls to action in a way that makes it easy for the user to get in touch. So that means if you have a form, you want that to be an easy to understand form. And some businesses will have only a form on the page, but others have the capabilities to be contacted differently. Some have phone numbers because there are people around to answer the phones. Others have chat options so that people can message you directly in the moment with any questions or follow-ups that they have. Now, the biggest thing about a phone number or chat is you need to make sure that somebody is going to be there to actually interact with those users in real time. If not, these might not be the right options for you, but you wanna make sure that it's easy for somebody to get in touch with you if they're ready to. You wanna make sure that the imagery that you have on the page is focused. That doesn't mean that it can't be stock imagery. Stock imagery can do some really good things for businesses and make it a lot easier to get really professional looking pages up and running quickly. But make sure whatever images you use on the page are supporting the message of the overall page and the offer that you have and not detracting and feeling out of place. Use whatever supporting benefits or features that you need to of the service or product that you're trying to offer. Yes, products can be lead generation as well. And we'll show an example of that here in just a little bit. But make sure that you are providing all of the information necessary for the user to get in touch with you, or at least a portion of it in case they have follow-up questions, they'll reach out. Social proof is another great piece to use. I think we all understand the idea of a product review for maybe a pair of shoes or any other item that you bought online, but the same is true for lead generation accounts, especially if they lean into the service as well. Yes, you might have the best product in the area, but are you enjoyable to work with? Will people actually like working with you and your employees? Using customer reviews can really help showcase not only the fact that you have a superior product or service, but also that your employees and your company is a joy to work with. The last two pieces go together pretty easily, fast to load and responsive. You want your landing page to load quickly because you're not sure whether the user is going to be on their ultra fast fiber internet at home, or if they're using their internet someplace where they're on edge service and it's taking a long time. You wanna give the same experience to both of those users. So make sure that your landing page, although it has all the other features on it, also loads quickly and will respond to whatever type of device the user is on. It's no secret that people use their mobile device for all sorts of things nowadays, if anything, desktops and laptops are probably the minority of devices, but don't forget that somebody who's doing a search on a laptop or desktop computer 
might be trying to do more robust research. So although we want to design for mobile first, as Google has said for a really long time, don't forget to make sure that you have an engaging page on all of the other options as well. So with these best practices in mind, let's jump into a few real world examples for three different services that I searched for. And we can start to see how some of these best practices are being applied in different ways, even though they're the same tactic. So the first product that I searched for is metal roofing, because I know that people need a little bit more information usually. It's not quite as common as regular shingles. So I figured there would be some sort of a lead generation process here to lean into. To start, pretty quickly, it delivers on user intent. I search for metal roofs. The headline talks about metal roofs, but additionally, it also says that they're the experts in this area. They've been the safest choice for over a decade. And you see an image of a metal roof on a house that looks like a house that is in this area. Strong start overall. You can see the banner up in the top right for the safest choice again. That's another type of social proof, even though it's not directly from your customers, it does look like some sort of a badge that they won, something like that. They easily could have made it up, but it looks legit. And that's the part that matters. In the header alone, it looks like there's some supporting information around benefits, materials, all that sort of thing. So if we come up here, click benefits, scrolls you down. Okay, I don't wanna do that quite yet. Materials, I'm guessing it's also gonna scroll us down. Yep, sure is. Okay, so there's some supporting documentation that we have there. And then while we're still in the header image, we can start to see a couple other best practices. First is going to be the call to action that's over here. So clearly you can just come over here and click on the phone number. This is a little bit goofy since I'm on my laptop, but this would be a great option for anybody on a mobile device. This would be something where it might make sense to change the call to action based on the device type, but in the section down here, there's another option to click to call. And there's also a free estimate, which I believe will take us to a form later down the page, which we'll get to in a minute. But the rest of the header section has benefits, materials and about us. If I click on this, it scrolls us down to a different section of the page. So this is probably one of those all encompassing landing pages where it just has anchors throughout the page to send people. So the benefits here, top quality roofing done right the first time. Again, more calls to action. Although these are benefits, it's basically focusing on the warranty up here. Okay, so why choose metal roofing? There's a paragraph. And then we get into products, which I believe if I were to click on materials, this is where it would have brought me anyway. So this benefit section doesn't have a ton of benefits, which is a little bit surprising. I would expect there to be a little bit more here, but the materials down below, you can see that there's something about a standing seam, exposed fastener, durable roof coatings, and then we get into badges. Each of these does have little notes down here below. That there's a warranty and colors. Let's click on just one of these buttons and see what it does. Oh, that scrolls us back up to a form. Okay, that's a little strange. I'd say they're not really delivering on the benefits and materials, even though they have sections for them on the page. I would absolutely build those out a bit more and make sure that you're giving some of that information on the page. Otherwise, people don't really know why they should use them and what materials you're using. But while we're here, you can see the form, pretty simple. This would be hard to mess up. First name, last name, phone number, email, and then property type, commercial or residential, easy. And then they do have a limited time offer, get up to 25% off any project and flexible financing. Nice call to action, nice little benefit. It does look like some terms and conditions apply, but still always helps you feel better when you feel like you're getting a discount. And keep scrolling down a little bit, see what else we can get here. Pinnacle of quality, the most advanced roofing material on the market. This is where we should be landing with the benefits. You can save money on your energy bill, you can overcome the elements and guaranteed to last a lifetime. This is a little bit better. You can do projects for residential, commercial, HOA and multifamily projects, looks good. And then we've got another kind of call to action here, at least with the benefit. And one thing I do wanna call out because I did engage with this page earlier, it would probably be useful to call out how much you can save, talk about what kind of elements. There's already a little bit of information about the warranty somewhere, but these would be really great places to build out more information. And if you'll notice when I hover over this link here, it looks like there's more information here but all it does is scroll you up to the form. So still not the best user experience. This page was pretty quick to load. I can definitely say that. So that part is good. It does look like it has a light load when it comes to the actual coding on the page. But overall, I'd say this page is pretty solid. It does give a good amount of information. Now we're starting to see some testimonials here, which is awesome. They're local and they expect you to be happy. They have a thousand five-star reviews, so that's great. 
If we keep going down the page, same sort of warranty message. You get a little bit of information about them, which is where it lands you if you click the About Us page down here. Family owned, which is great. And then we keep scrolling down a little bit and we get back into some additional calls to action here. And we're pretty much at the bottom of the page by now. Last thing is just to check pretty quickly on what it looks like on a mobile device. So we'll go up to View in Chrome Settings, Developer, Developer Tools. I'm gonna scroll all the way back up to the top. But on the way, everything looks pretty good, looks to be responsive to a mobile device, so people would have a pretty good experience on this. So again, overall, I think this page looks pretty good, even if there are some things that they could improve on. We're gonna look at one more roofing page because this one looks quite a bit different. So again, header image, it's got their brand name, you have a call to action up here at the top, even if it's kind of hidden, but then you can find additional links up here as well to request service, request a quote, contact or go home. But you do see in the first part here, metal roof installation in Fishers. It's one of the cities that's around here. The imagery, even though it's small, still leans into it. Call to action is right up at the top of the page. You can get a free installation quote. You just have to add in your zip code and you can get the estimate in under two minutes, which is a nice little expectation setting piece. In the supporting information, they talk about why us. They've got all these little notes about themselves here. They do have a 4.7 review, a 4.7 average score out of five stars, which is pretty good. They don't count the number of reviews like the other one did, but the other one also didn't tell us what their overall rating was. Depending on how you look at it, these are two different ways to do that. You can easily show more reviews here if you want to, but I'm not going to. This one highlights the service area, which I think is kind of useful some good information to know because if you're in Danville or Crawfordsville, you are outside of their service area. So again, relevant supporting imagery, even if it's not exactly like you would have thought. There's a little bit of about us information on here, still relevant imagery in my mind, but I will say I searched for metal roof and these roofs are not metal. So I would adjust those a little bit, but still useful to see some of their work and it never hurts to see a picture of the family apparently. Down here, they have some FAQs. The other page did not have this. So this is some good supporting information around, should I do this myself or hire out? How much will it cost? How long will it take? And why choose them? And that brings us to the bottom of the page. So I'd say that this option doesn't deliver on nearly as many of the bells and whistles as the other one does, but I think it does still check the box for delivering on user intent, especially up here at the top has a relevant header. There are a couple of calls to action throughout the page, but not a ton, and they're not as easy to find. If nothing else, you could easily put another call to action down here at the bottom, even if all it does is scroll you back up to the top, like the previous site did. The imagery is somewhat focused, but could be tightened up. They have some supporting information. The FAQs is something that's a little new. They have social proof that represents itself in a different way than the previous site. This was also fast to load, and last thing, let's check and see if it's responsive. So again, doing the developer view. Overall, seems pretty good. So still fits right in the right range, no problems there. And the nice thing is, you can see here on a mobile device, that bar that we saw on desktop that might be a little goofy is a sticky header. Since the page is responsive, maybe that needs to be there just to make sure that users on mobile have a good experience. The next thing I searched for was whole life insurance. I realized I didn't show you this for the metal roof piece, but for this one specifically because of a couple things, I wanted to show you that I did actually search for it and clicked on it and got there. And the first one that showed up at the top was Northwestern Mutual. I think the imagery here looks great. People buy insurance, especially whole life insurance because they want their family to be protected. So that part is great. Image of somebody holding a child. And yes, life insurance to protect what matters most is really helpful but I searched for whole life insurance. So although this header section is relevant, could be a little bit more relevant. Pretty immediately after that, we get into the first form. So call to action is right up there at the top. And this form looks quite a bit different than other forms that I've seen in the past, but I really like it because it is a different take and people who might not be as internet savvy can easily understand this form, even though it deviates from normal aesthetics and structures of forms. My biggest financial goal is to, then you can interact. You can either protect your wealth, build financial security, buy a home, save for retirement, all these different options. And then you add in your additional information and then you can get matched to an advisor. That's the first call to action is just to get matched to an advisor. So check the box on easy to understand call to action here. If we scroll down a little bit more, there are three types of insurance to protect the life you love. This definitely checks the box on supporting information, but again, I searched originally for whole life. This page should probably be entirely about whole life unless 
Northwestern Mutual has repeatedly noticed that people searching for whole life insurance don't actually get or want whole life insurance. Insurance in general is a very complex topic and most people don't understand it. And most people probably don't understand the intricacies and nuances between everything. So this could be from their experience, the best way to go about it. But from a marketer perspective, if somebody typed in whole life insurance, I would rather have the very beginning of the page and at least the first portion of it talking about whole life insurance by itself and then maybe further down the page introducing additional options in case whole life insurance isn't exactly what somebody wanted. So not terrible, but maybe not how I would have done it. We scroll down here, we start to get some stats, policy owners who stay with them for over a year. So we have a little bit of social proof here. 97% of policy owners stay with them year over year. I don't know what year over year means. Whole life insurance for me means the rest of my life. Not sure if this stat really means much, but we can see that we're supposed to have the best consumer experience and they expect 6.8 billion in dividends to be paid in 2023. So although these aren't backed up with a lot right here, you can see the little numbers up at the top. So there's probably some footnotes that help to explain that. I don't really know how I feel about that. I'd probably rather it just be right here, but again, maybe that's something people don't care too much about. You then get an image and an example of what an advisor could look like, another call to action to get started. And then we have all the disclaimers down at the bottom. And again, this is for insurance. I'm not surprised there are these big disclaimers down here at the bottom. But overall, I'd say that this page checks off everything on the list, even if it's not done as well as maybe I would like it to be. The page is relatively short and doesn't have big image files on it. So it was very quick to load. Let's see what it looks like on mobile. Same thing, looks fine. Doesn't seem to be any sort of image formatting or anything like that that's a problem. So all good there. And it does have a unique form, which I find really interesting. Very limited imagery, but what they have is focused. Maybe beef up the supporting benefits and the social proof, but otherwise ticks all the boxes. Let's take a look at another whole life plan. And this one again, coverage options starting at $9.95 a month. Doesn't say anything about whole life insurance. It doesn't even actually say anything about insurance in this part. You have to wait until guaranteed accepted life insurance without medical exams, health questions, or rate increases. And then you get a mention of it. That said, you do get a quote right here as your call to action. Also have one up here. And you can call the phone number. Imagery looks good. And this page did load pretty quickly. And it has an additional piece down here as seen on Sherry. Get the recap now. So let's do this because this is a different experience than most other pages had. So by clicking on that, it scrolled me down the page. You can see Colonial Pen on Sherry. Jonathan Lawson, the insurance professional off on the right, showed up on the Sherry Shepard daytime talk show. I'm not here to make any statements about Sherry Shepard or her talk show, but if your target audience watches that show or has some sort of affinity for her or trusts her, this is a really great social proof example that deviates from the regular reviews online that can generate trust with you and your brand compared to your competitors. The call to action around all of this is to call now, call down here again as well, but they've got a life insurance overview. Again, it's not whole life, but there still is some information there. And that call to action, all it did was scroll us down the page. So then if we scroll down life insurance solutions, you can get permanent whole life insurance. This is what I searched for. Guaranteed acceptance life insurance, something a little bit different, but again, this might be something that both insurance companies have noticed. People actually want something different than whole life insurance. So they offer that on the page as well. If we keep scrolling down, we're gonna go past this social proof. They speak Spanish, so you can explore within the Spanish site. You can get in touch with them on that page and you can look into different products that could be reasonable for you. And then as we scroll down, we start getting into reasons why you would choose Colonial Pen. So they're rated A by AM Best the global rating agency for the insurance industry. So this is a great social proof piece. They then talk about the amount that they have in life insurance, and they talk about the number of policies that they have. So again, just a different way of showing social proof because of the amount, but then rather than saying they have all of these reviews and this kind of stuff, they actually say, we have 760,000 life insurance policies. We keep scrolling down. They do talk about how to make customer service simple. So talking about different ways to interact there and then down more toward the bottom, you can get a quick quote and then they have all of the different types of contact down here below in the footer. So nothing too fancy on this one, but again, it does check pretty much every box, even though it's not specific on user intent, it is at least life insurance and there is a permanent whole life insurance option on the page. The header is relevant. It has good calls to action throughout, whether it's a form or getting in touch via phone. The imagery, 
works pretty well. Nothing super impactful there. Supporting features and benefits, not a ton, but that seems to be the standard when it comes to these insurance pages. Different types of social proof with the TV show mention. It loaded pretty quickly. And the last check here, what does mobile look like? Again, looks pretty good. So whenever I look at a mobile piece, I usually scroll and just make sure everything formats pretty well. After that, since it works on the desktop page, you'd assume that it's also gonna work on the mobile page as well. And then the last insurance one is gonna be for Mutual of Omaha. So we do start off with guaranteed whole life insurance as the main header. So this is the first one that actually delivers exactly on what I wanted, even if the header is up here and doesn't stand out quite as much as you might want. But we've got pretty relevant imagery. You can get your quote. And rather than just having the single form field like the previous one or the paragraph, this one follows a much more traditional option here. And then even this first paragraph that you see up here on the right, it's actually starting to get into a handful of the features and benefits and why you would utilize whole life insurance brought to you by Mutual of Omaha. Takes the financial burden off your loved ones, can pay for end of life expenses, and you can access your cast in an emergency. You don't need medical exams and the rates will never increase. So you even get to see additional pieces for guaranteed acceptance ranges for certain ages and coverage amounts. So there's a lot of information here that really helps you know whether or not you may or may not qualify pretty quickly. You can apply in as little as five minutes. And although they have the big form here, there is a phone number. And then you can see this chat option down here on the right. As I scroll down, that is the page. So the other two life insurance pages have a lot going on, but this one still ticks many of the different boxes. This one actually delivers on my intent. The header is relevant, calls to action are easy, imagery is focused. It does have some supporting features and benefits information, but the thing that it's lacking entirely is social proof. There is no social proof on this page whatsoever, whether it's based on the business, customer reviews, any of that, there's nothing here for that. Additionally, even though this page is short, it actually took quite a while to load. I had to reload it because it wouldn't load properly the first time. That could just be a short blip, but keep in mind, just because a page is short and doesn't look like it has a lot going on does not mean that it's going to load quickly. And then again, just a quick mobile check. And this is one of the first pages that actually reorders what happens on the mobile page versus desktop. Remember on desktop, the entire left-hand side of the page was that form. That's kind of what you saw first, but on mobile, the supporting information, those features and benefits that they have actually take precedent over that form. You don't hit a call to action until you get closer to halfway down the page. I would be very curious to see the conversion rates for this page versus a page that flipped those around. Personally, as a consumer, I would rather have most of the supporting information first and not the call to action, but that's just because I don't like being heavily sold to right off the bat. But if you've been on the internet on your mobile device at all, you've probably noticed that most companies put the form right up at the top. There's got to be a reason for that. So overall, mobile looks good. If anything, I like that they reordered the information on the page to be more educational and informational at the beginning before getting into the calls to action. My last option is going to be for interior design work in my area. Starting off here, I think the imagery looks fine but there's no real supporting information on the header other than there's a top navigation that you could use on the page and the logo. That's really all that reinforces that other than maybe the job title up in the top right. You do see the option to call or that email is also clickable. If I hover over it, this would be a mail to link. So it's gonna open up in my mail client. So this is the first one we see that has an email option right off the bat, or at least the first one that I have noticed. So that's a different way for people to easily get in touch is just to email you right away. And then as we scroll down, now we start to see a little bit more here. So why choose the Clark team? This is gonna focus entirely on the features and benefits of working with them. So convenience, quality, service, selection. This page is very text heavy, but there are images on the right that I think help support, especially with interior design. You probably wanna go with somebody who has the same type of aesthetics and likes that you do. So using lots of imagery for this makes a lot of sense to me. Again, they had a ton of different options here. They had 10 reasons why you should work with them. They do have one testimonial here and they continue to have calls to action down here with a contact us. That takes you to a contact form on a different page on the site. So that's interesting. There's again, another phone number. And then you do see that they have an A plus BBB rating, which is great. If anything, I would make that bigger. Call out that you're an A plus rated business. And if we scroll down just a little bit, ready to get started on your project, you can get in touch. There are some other links down here. So relatively minimal page, 
but still covers a lot of the options. I would say the user intent is delivered on. These are interior designers, but the header leaves a little bit of convincing to be desired. Multiple different calls to action. Imagery's great. Lots of supporting features and benefits. They technically check the box on social proof, even though they could be dialing that up a little bit, either through the customer reviews or that BBB rating. And it was pretty fast to load and it looks okay on a mobile device. That header image wasn't quite the same as what it would look like on a desktop, but that's okay. Everything else loads pretty easily and it all formats within the mobile experience. Again, you can see that all of the images are below all of these different bullet points that they had here. If they're able to customize it, that might be better to start to intersperse them. So maybe put one, two, three, put an image, four, five, six, add another image, just to break up the text and make sure that you continue to show off the aesthetic that your brand typically goes for. The next link that I clicked on right underneath that previous interior designer is this one, home, office, and desk furniture. This is a miss to me, doesn't make any sense. And this is why I wanted to show it to you. We're not gonna go through this one nearly as much as we have the previous ones, but I did wanna show you that this is what it looks like when you completely miss the boat, because this is not interior design as a service. This is somebody who builds custom home offices, which is great but the company name is also Superior Closet Systems. So these are two different rooms in the house that are super useful and could be designed by an interior designer, but I did not search for a home office and desk furniture setup. Maybe they're trying to cast a wide net. The ad copy does talk about office and desk furniture, but not everybody always reads the ad copy before they just click on the first or second thing on the page. Some of you might wanna know what this page looks like, so I'll scroll through it really quickly. Talks about custom home offices, which the imagery is good for that. You can get a consultation. You can organize the office however you want. Look, you can even pick your cabinets. They have happy customers. So this is a different way of showing your reviews. They've got 4.6 stars on Google, and then you can start to scroll through the different reviews that they have available. So again, this is a different way to showcase your customer reviews. This is the first company that actually outlines their process. You get a free consultation, you get a complimentary design and quote, and then everything gets installed. So that's some really good supporting information and represents in a different way than anybody else has shown us so far. And then if we keep scrolling down, we've got one big form down here at the bottom. Again, very easy to understand. And although this page is supposed to be about custom office furniture, they do have their entire section that is dedicated to a closet because they are superior closet systems. So again, quite a big miss on user intent. The relevance wasn't quite there and things are a little confusing with the entire page being about offices, but the imagery down here is for a closet. But otherwise, it's got some pretty interesting stuff around our process and the happy customer section that's different from everybody else. The last page is for Home and Willow Design. The entire header section of this site is this little looped video and it fits to every device that you're on. But you can see a lot of the different pieces here as they're going around their showroom, which this one actually highlights a showroom versus anything else. But there is a menu option over here that is a little tough to see, but it brings up this entire huge menu, which not quite sure how I feel about that, but that's the way it shows up. It really just takes over and it's kind of hard. You have to scroll even through the menu, even though there's seven options. It seems a little large, maybe not the best user experience there. But then as we scroll down the page, you can start to see some of the other information here. The number one problem their clients face is feeling overwhelmed and they solve that. Work with us, tiny call to action here. We'll take you to a contact us form. The next section down here is around their services. So you can see all services, which will take you to a different page, but then you can start to see one, some really highlighted imagery here, but then two, a service they have as a designer for a day, whatever the Willow signature means. And then as we keep scrolling down, you can see different color selections as well as construction and renovation selections. Each one of them has learn more that would take us to a completely different page on the site, which is gonna be different from the previous ones that we saw earlier that just scrolled you up to the form, which was a little strange. So I would say this one actually delivers on the features and benefits information. Even if you have to go to another page to get there, you actually can get more information on these different services. As we keep scrolling down, trusted design partners, got some good reviews here. No overall star rating. We can't scroll through anything else. We've got just these two, but again, pretty clear and concise pieces. Again, not only are they talking about the business, they're talking about Stacy specifically, who is the lead designer here. As we keep scrolling down, 
Got a new contact us piece that'll take you to that same form again. So good use of calls to action throughout the page, not just at the top and the bottom. But then this one has a different option that all the other ones didn't. You can visit their new space. So one of the calls to action on this page is to one, watch this video about their new space and two, to actually visit their store. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this video on, let it start playing and we'll see what pops up. And I turned the sound off, but it effectively just has some smooth jazz. But if you were curious, if you wanted to partner with this company, you can easily go through their showroom and again, find their aesthetic versus other brands. That first one that we looked at had really light colors and was a little bit more airy. This one has some darker colors. There was a lot of wood tones on the website, but you can get a sense for what the store actually looks like in this almost drone-like video. So again, different call to action, different option that others haven't been using. So if we keep scrolling down on the page, but then we start to get another section that others haven't shown off before either, which is gonna be their design blog. You can read more about any of these individual topics, whether it's about the people that she works with, bathroom design, or speaking with frustrated customers. Again, all of this is just supporting information of why this person or this company is an expert. And then even further, especially for a design company, this makes so much sense to me, follow them on social media. Look at their Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or whatever it is, and engage with them on a regular basis around what their aesthetic is, what their process is, what are they posting on this channel and engage with them there. This is a great piece for anybody who's on the fence, potentially about working with a designer, making sure they're the right fit. Send them to your social media. If you're keeping it up and showing off your work, why not? You can see their specific partners down here. And then down at the bottom, we've got the footer that has all this stuff here. So I think this definitely delivers on user intent. The header section was a bit goofy, but it, it wasn't not relevant. So I think it makes sense. There are some calls to action used throughout the page, even if there could be a little bit more clear distinction between them. But again, we got a few new calls to action we haven't seen before around social media, but then also looking at the blog, but then also going and doing a virtual tour of the showroom. All of the imagery is really focused. They've got some supporting features and benefits here. And even if they might not be specific around timing and expectations and that sort of thing, there is a lot of information about them in the blog and social media. This section does help highlight some of the social proof, even if it is on the minor end, but the page, even with that video at the top was very quick to load. And then we'll just look at the mobile view real quick. Again, same thing, that video covers up everything pretty quickly. But then as we scroll down, you can start to see all the same information. But you'll also notice the video at the top was a bit different than it was before, and it already went to something else. So this is a little bit goofy. And another reason you should always check the mobile version of your page, because it doesn't always match up to what you would expect from desktop. This is a very weird user experience, and I would definitely look to fix this. I'm putting the best practices up here again, just for your reference in case you missed them at the beginning or wanted to see them again. But hopefully if you've enjoyed this more real world walkthrough of lead generation landing page examples, understanding what seems to work, what doesn't. You understand our process for reviewing landing pages, but then also hopefully you've also seen some different ways that each of these best practices can be applied rather than just simply following the same format that you've always done. If you have any questions about any of these best practices, any of these landing pages or anything else around lead generation landing page strategy, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.